welcome back to the class on electrical vehicles and hybrid electrical vehicles in this lecture we are going to discuss about the modeling of three phase induction motor in the last lecture we have seen the how to model the bldc motor how we are going to control the bldc motor just a bldc motor we can be able to control both the torque as well as the speed the same manner we have to control the speed and torque developed in a three phase induction motor also because this is one more motor which we are using in a electric vehicles modeling is nothing but the actual behavior of a machine that we are going to convert into the equations is nothing but a modeling already we know that the three phase induction motor has a two parts one is stator another one is the rotor there are two types of rotors are there one is spiral case rotor another one is a spring rotor first you have to take the spiral case rotor when you come to the stator the stator is consisting of three phase winding which is displaced from 120 degrees in a space whenever we are giving a three phase supply to the stator winding the rotating field will be creating from the stator winding that will be rotating in a space there is a rate of change of flux linkage with a rotor conductors or the rotor bars which are short circuited according to faraday law of electromagnetic induction there is a voltage will be induced in a rotor bars because of that voltage the current is passing through the rotor bars that current also the three phase current when the three phase currents are passing through the rotor conductors again the flux will be creating from the rotor bars it will be also rotating in the same direction of the stator flux the speed of a stator flux and rotor flux is same that is synchronous speed that is equal to ns equal to 120f by p so we can represent the both stator flux as well as rotor flux in a common stationary reference frame that is the dq frame d axis is nothing but a, the axis which is passing through the rotor field or rotor flux perpendicular to the d axis this is the q axis this is the voltage vector this voltage vector is nothing but a stator voltage vector vas vbs vcs three are mutually displaced by 120 degrees in a space now we can represent this the stator has a three windings a phase b phase and c phase each phase is giving a sinusoidal flux so some of the three fluxes are nothing but a resultant flux that is the rotating vector so we can represent the stator mmf equal to fas e to the power of j theta plus fbs e to the power of j 120 plus fcs e to the power of 240 fas is nothing but a stator mmf coming from the a phase fbs is nothing but a stator mmf coming from the b phase this is from the c phase here we have taken 120 degrees here we have taken the 240 degrees because the MMF creating from the B and C phase are displaced by 120 degrees in a space when compared to the A phase. So some of the three quantities are nothing but a FSS. Subscript is representing the stator S is nothing but a stator. Superscript is representing the which frame that variable is considered. In this case it is a stator fixed frame. Similarly we can write the stator voltage stator current and stator flux also see this is the stator voltage this is the stator current this is the stator flux link case as bs cs are the phases of a phase b phase c phase of a stator superscript s referred to the variable that is referred to the stator fixed frame now we are converting this abc into the dq axis where dq axis in a fixed stator frame already we have seen in the diagram by means of this matrix we can convert the abc into the dq in a fixed stator frame because the superscript is the s the same manner we can use the same matrix for the converting the cur stator currents as well as a stator flux link case if you observe the stator and the rotor there is a difference in a number of turns in a stator winding as well as a rotor winding how exactly we represented the stator voltage current and stator flux linkage in the same manner we can also represent the rotor current rotor voltage and rotor flux linkage but both will be differed by the number of turns if we take the number of turns of a rotor is nr 
and the number of turns of stator ns v is the ratio between the per phase number of turns in a stator to the per phase number of turns in a rotor now we are going to represent the rotor variables with respect to the stator this is the d q axis this is dr and qr both are mutually perpendicular this dr qr is nothing but a dq axis of the rotor if we take the ir here ir is nothing but a rotor current the rotor current see the dq axis of a rotor because the superscript is r so it is representing the rotor fixed frame dq is representing the stator fixed frame so both will be displaced by theta naught so we can make a one relation between the rotor dq frame and stator dq frame in terms of theta naught suppose if you take the ir first we are representing the ir we are we are finding the ir in terms of a rotor dq frame that is this is idr r now if you find the value of this vector on this qr this is iqr r the same manner if you find the same vector on the d and q these two are nothing but a stator fixed dq frame idr s and iqs s so we can make a relation between these two also see here i r s equal to e to the power of j theta by v into i r r where i r r is nothing but a rotor current on a rotor frame where this value is nothing but a rotor current on a fixed stator frame if we observe this voltage v r s equal to v e to the power of j theta naught v r r the same manner lambda r s equal to v e to the power of j theta lambda r r if we observe last two quantities v e to the power of j theta will be multiplying the remaining quantity but in case of a current v will be dividing the small v is nothing but a ns by nr this is the equivalent circuit for the stator as well as the rotor suppose if we take the stator this is the stator resistance this is the stator inductance this we can represent it as e equal to d lambda by dt so from this equivalent circuit we can write the stator equation vss nothing but a stator voltage on a fixed stator frame that is equal to rs into is s plus d by dt of lambda s s if we come to the rotor vrr equal to rr into i rr plus d by dt of lambda rr this is nothing but a resistance drop this is nothing but a voltage induced in a inductance of a rotor on a rotor frame this is nothing but a voltage induced in a stator because of the stator leakage flux on a stator frame this is the rotor resistance drop this is the applied voltage on a stator frame in equation 5 we have a stator equation as well as a rotor equation the stator equation on the stator frame where is the rotor equation on the rotor frame if we take the rotor equation on the rotor frame the first term on the right hand side we can represent it by means of e to the power of minus j theta not by v rr ir s now what is the difference between this these two equations means here this quantity on the rotor frame this quantity on the stator frame the same manner the second term in a rotor equation on the rotor frame that also we can represent it in terms of a d by dt of delta r r equal to e to the power of j theta naught by v into d by dt of delta r r minus j omega naught where omega naught is nothing but a synchronous speed of a induction motor substituting these two equations in a rotor equation we are getting the v r s equal to r r i r s plus d by dt of lambda r s minus j omega naught lambda r for simplicity we are representing this differentiation by means of operator p so v r f s equal to r r i r of s plus p minus j omega naught into delta r s similarly you can write the 
stator equation in terms of a operator p also v s of s equal to r s into i s of s plus p into lambda s of s if you observe these two equations this is the rotor equation in terms of a stator fixed frame this is the stator equation in terms of a stator fixed frame. nothing but a whatever the equation we got it on a rotor fixed frame that we transfer to the stator fixed frame the above equation is consisting a stator leakage flux as well as the rotor leakage flux that we can represent it in terms of a stator current on a stator fixed stator frame and rotor current on a stator frame by means of this equation or matrices where lm is nothing but a mutual inductance ls is nothing but a stator inductance calculated as a sum of stator leakage inductance and mutual inductance lm similarly lr is nothing but a rotor inductance calculated as a rotor leakage reactance llr and mutual inductance lf stator equation as well as rotor equation in terms of stator frame if we convert that stator equation and rotor equation on the stator frame if we convert it into the dq frame then we are getting this matrix this is nothing but a vds of s vqs of s vdr of s vqr of s this is the one matrix this is the current matrix this is the self inductance and mutual inductance of a matrix d by dt of again this is the current matrix this is the final voltage matrix form of a induction motor in terms of a d axis and q axis where d and q axis are the stator frame if we take the induction motor maybe the squirrel case induction motor or the spring induction motor whatever it is in a steady state the rotor winding is short circuited so v d r of s and v q r of s are equal to 0 at a given rotor speed omega not if we solve for the stator and rotor current from the above matrix form of a induction motor we can represent the torque developed in induction motor by means of this one t equal to p by 3 lm iqs s idr of s minus ids s iqr s this is equal to p by 3 lm imaginary part of is s and ir s if we observe this equation so whatever the ac quantities we have that we are transfer into the stator dq axis when you are transferring the ac quantities into the stator dq axis the dq quantities also sinusoidal quantities which are also we changing with respect to the time but whatever the control system we are using to control the induction motor all those components are working on the dc quantity which is changing with respect to the time so we have a one transformation which can able to transfer the ac quantities into the dq dc quantities which are varying with respect to the time so that we can easily use the, the quantities in a controlling of a induction motor see here this is the d axis and this is the q axis on a stator frame this is capital d this is capital q which are nothing but a dc dq axis so if we transfer the all the quantities on this axis capital d and capital q reference frame then we can use that quantities for the controlling of induction motor because of where the control blocks of induction motor is highly working on the the dc quantity which is varying with respect to the time now this axis will be rotating dq axis will be rotating with a velocity of omega that axis is nothing but excitation axis vs e equal to vs s into e to the power of minus j omega t where e to the power of minus j omega t we can write it as a cos omega t minus sin omega t if we keep this equation in a matrix form because already we know the quantities in a vds and vps those quantities we have to convert it into the excitation frame by means of this vector so by means of this vector whatever the equations we have on a stator fixed dq frame that we can convert it into the excitation dq frame so finally the motor equations in terms of a excitation reference frame vs e equal to rs into is e plus p plus j omega delta s nothing but this is the equation which is representing for the rotor vre equal to rr plus ire plus 
P plus J omega minus J omega naught into lambda R E. This omega omega minus omega naught that we can write it as omega R. So we can simplify this quantity. We are getting the R R I R G e plus P plus J omega R lambda R E. These are the final equations of a induction motor of a stator as well as a rotor and a excitation frame. Already we have calculated the torque developed in the induction motor and the stator fixed DQ frame. The same manner here also we can calculate the torque developed in an induction motor on an excitation frame. P by 3 LM IQSE IDRE minus IDSE into IQRE. This is equal to P by 3 LM imaginary part of ISE into IRE star. IRE star is nothing but a complex conjugate of rotor current on an excitation frame. So we can use these quantities in a control system to control the induction motor. In the next class, we are going to see the what are the different control techniques are available to control the induction. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my YouTube channel so that I am always welcome to answer all your questions.